If you couldn't tell, today we're filming a Pretty Little Liars video. Yes, we are. Hi guys, it's Lauren Daisy. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be finally ranking every single, yes, every single Pretty Little Liars character, love interest, every single pairing on the show. There is 85 of them. 85. Okay? And we're going to go through every single one today. So it's going to be quite a long video. Maybe get some snacks. Maybe get, you know, a nice a nice hot beverage. Um, get comfy. And let's get straight into it. Now, I would like to clarify that these are not all official couples. Um, if you've been watching this little series that I've been doing, we've been ranking all the Pretty Little Lies love interests. So individually, I have done Arya, Spencer, Hannah, Emily, and Alison. So you can go and watch those videos if you want to see more in depth about how I feel about those couples and things like that. Because if I did that for this video, we would be here all day. It would be like Gossip Girl Part 3 in here, which Gossip Girl Part 3 is coming, okay? Like, I wish, I wish that I could say like, oh, it's, you know it's done it's not it's just such a huge project um but it is on its way i promise i promise i have not forgotten about it um and you will be the first to know when it is ready to upload i'll schedule it and everything it'll be great so anyway i'm back to pll um so yeah i've been doing these videos obviously it's all like my opinion and i love to hear your guys's opinions in the comments and yeah, you can go back and watch the five individual videos I did. Um, but today we're going to be talking about absolutely everybody. And I'm not just talking couples that include the core five. We're talking about Mona, Noel, the parents, Charlotte, absolutely everybody. Any kind of inkling of a romantic interest has been included today. And if there is anyone I've forgotten about, I'm going to be so incredibly upset because I feel like I truly have everyone that has ever interacted that feels like maybe this could be a couple. I feel like I truly have that. And there's 85 of them. So we're going to get straight into it. At number 85, I have Elliot and Allison as officially what I believe is the worst couple in PLL history. Now, hear me out. I know we have a lot of dodgy kind of age gap relationships coming up more than you would think. But for me, I had to put these two at the bottom because what he does to her is so incredibly evil. The way that he gaslit her, made her think that she was insane, made her think that, you know, she was losing herself and her mind when she wasn't with these like prosthetic makeup, making her think she was seeing dead, making her think she was seeing her own dead mother. But it was really just Mary Drake like dressed up as her. I'm in good lord. Putting her into this mental asylum, making her think that he was her husband and he loved her. And then to just go and then forcibly like impregnate her with her best friend's eggs. I stand by it to this day. I think that is the most fucked up thing that ever happened on Pretty Little Liars. Alison's pregnancy and the way that it happened and the fact that they were Emily's and like everything is easily the most fucked up thing that ever happened on Pretty Little Liars, I think. It's a tie between that and when um, Hannah got like abducted and, the, and she was shocked and everything like that and the dollhouse. Like all those three, I think definitely contenders for the worst thing that has ever happened on that show. And because of that, Alison and Elliot, easy at the bottom. At number 84, I have Toby and Jenna. And I feel like it's kind of easy sometimes to forget about Toby and Jenna because it happened literally in the first season and we don't really hear about it again, like after homecoming, I don't think. But obviously they were step siblings and Jenna forced Toby to be with her and kind of like threatened that if he wasn't, that he, that if he wouldn't, you know, hook up with her and, and be in this kind of weird toxic relationship with her, then she would, you know, it was a whole thing. That she would basically tell um, their parents that he did anyway. And it was very, very fucked up. I feel like it was very messed up, especially for the first season when they're obviously all supposed to be like, um, well, when Alison disappears, I'm pretty sure they're like 15. Um, so this was a 15 year old like girl being a predator to this, I, I think Toby's a little bit older, so maybe like 16, 17 year old 
guy, like, and they were step siblings. It's all very weird. Okay, it's all very weird. Um, so, yeah, definitely an uncomfortable watch. Um, Jenna is obviously, you know, she's kind of considered one of the most iconic characters of PLL. I would say she's got huge villain energy. Um, and I think they could have done a lot more with her character. Um, but yeah, seeing them together, like in the later seasons when they interact always just feels weird to me. Cause I'm like, do the writers just forget the history of these two? Like the deeply disgusting history between these two and the fact that it was on film and everything is just, so yeah. Yeah. This was, um, non-consensual and like not not incest because they weren't related but like it's just weird it's just weird it's giving life in Derek okay it's just weird at number 83 I have Toby and Alex now obviously they weren't an official couple or anything like that they just slept together um but the reason I have them this far down um when again I know we still have some age gap relationships coming up but Again, it's poor Toby, okay? Poor Toby. Book Bookending Pretty Little Lies in season one and season seven, this man is being taken advantage of, okay? Because he obviously, he could, in his mind, he was consenting to sleep with Spencer. He was like, and this is a completely different person. This is her twin, okay? This is a completely different person. Yes, they look exactly the same, but he did not consent to having sex with Alex. He didn't even know her. He didn't know anything about her. He thought that that was between him and Spencer. And then it turns out that it wasn't. And again, season seven is so insanely twisted and messed up some of the things that happen. And this is easily up there. So yeah, again, another rock bottom for me. I was just like, Ugh. At number 82, I have Emily and Lyndon or Nate. Um, however you kind of want to refer to him as. Um, he's called Nate for most of like his time there, but it's obviously an alias. Um, because what the fuck? Firstly, I'm pretty sure she's supposed to be seeing Paige at the time when they kiss, or maybe Paige is just trying to win her back, but whatever. Um, and it's very, it's just very weird. He uses Maya's death and the tragedy of that and how heartbroken Emily is and manipulates it into getting her um, to have these feelings for him. And they don't come from a place of true feelings for him because obviously we know that Emily is gay and she just feels such deep sorrow and misses Maya so much that him being her cousin and the way that they were able to talk about her made her feel close to Maya and those were the feelings that she was feeling and obviously they end up kissing and then he reveals that he was actually the one that killed Maya he tries to kill Paige and he tries to kill Emily as well so yeah definitely definitely low down on the list at number 81 and I feel like it just shows you how incredibly messed up the other ones are for me to have this one this high up and like, it's not even that high, but like six up, it's already like, Jesus Christ. Um, or like five up or whatever it is. Is um, Jason and Cece. So I feel like this one doesn't need any explaining because it's so incredibly messed up. It turns out, well, when we first hear about it, they make it sound like they were brother and sister. They're actually not, they are cousins. Um, because obviously it ends up that um, Cece's mom is Mary Drake and her dad is, um, Ted. So she's not actually Alison and Jason's sister. She's their cousin. Um, but they, she like insists that nothing ever happened between them. Um, that it was purely just, you know, they were dating, but nothing happened. Um, and it's so incredibly weird. Like, I, I just feel like she could have still kind of wormed her way into their lives without dating him like it's just bizarre like I, feel, I just I just feel as though she could have found a way to get in with the dealer entices without dating their son who she believed was her brother or at least she knew she was related to him in some form do you know what I mean she could have befriended Alison 
is she like Alison and the girls just are around Rosewood. They go to wherever they go to. She could have befriended her or even just gone to the house or however she wanted to go about it rather than dating their son. All very bizarre. All very weird and very icky. At number 80, I have Alison and Wilden. This one just... Ugh. Like, this one just gets under makes, this one makes my skin crawl it truly makes my skin crawl um so obviously Allison and Wilden get together um before she disappears um he is beach hottie and not only did they just kind of date they actually did sleep together and we know this because Allison told Cece that she thought she could be pregnant with his child and that she worried that if she was, that he would kill her. So, also, Wilden is incredibly old, okay? Now, when when they first had this storyline, obviously, Alison goes missing when she's 15. And Wilden, his age is very ambiguous because of how they've taken the story. But at the time, I think he was about 24, Um I, th I think something like that. He wasn't a full-on police detective yet. So he's at least in his probably mid-twenties, which is already incredibly icky. I'm also, you know what? We're going to start an age gap counter. That's what we're going to do. Creepy age gap relationship. Put one on the counter. But then fast forward to season six. And apparently... Um, Wilden is already a cop when Cece is 12 years old because we know Marin gets pushed and um, she, whoever it is manages to get Wilden to cover up that whole thing and then Wilden also covers up, you know, Alison's death and, and all this kind of stuff and so he's already a cop long before that which surely puts him in his 30s. So retrospectively now, it's a 15-year-old who is sleeping with someone in their 30s. It's so incredibly gross. And I feel like that whole Wilden thing just adds a can of worms. Like, why couldn't it have just been a police cover-up that didn't involve Wilden? Because it completely changes his age. It changes the whole of the first season, because why was he so hell-bent on finding out who killed Alison when he already knew? I'm not even getting into plot holes in this video, because, again, I'll be here forever, but yeah gross i hate it i think it's such an icky storyline at number 79 i have ashley and wilden because i this is such an uncomfortable watch for me i feel like when i was younger i didn't quite grasp it so much because everything you see in pretty little lies feels like it's through the eyes of the girls and that everything in the show their problems take priority and they're the ones you're supposed to be focusing on. But I feel like as I got older and I would watch it, I would be like, when you actually deep it, the Ashley and Wilden thing is so incredibly messed up. The fact that she is f like forced, obviously like she, you know, entered into that, but she does it for Hannah. She does it because Wilden basically puts it out there. He's like, if you are willing to sleep with me, I can make this go away, which is so gross. This is why Wilden is just probably the worst, one of the worst characters on this entire show. He's so smarmy and just awful. And I just, like when I see it now, I always just think it's so incredibly sad that she had to go to those lengths to protect Hannah and that Wilden was able to kind of take advantage of her in that way and abuse his power like that. And because of that that's why i have it at this this point on the list at number 78 i have emily and ben and i have them i maybe this seems a bit like drastic to have them this far down when we like compared to some of the other people we're going to see on this list but for me even though yes they were a couple um it has nothing to do with the fact that obviously emily was actually gay and didn't really love ben it has nothing for me it has nothing to do with that for me it all comes down to when he tries to force himself on her in the girls locker rooms that again 
an absolutely awful scene and obviously Toby comes in and is able to get Ben off of her um but it is just so cruel and I think isn't talked about enough um because after that kind of happens obviously Emily ends up befriending Toby but Emily doesn't really tell anybody about that it doesn't come up again um and I think it's just a really sad See, like they use it in such a they use it in such a dramatic way, uh, but they never really talk about how that actually affects Emily, and nothing ever really happens to Ben to kind of you know um, bring him to kind of justice over it or anything like that. At seventy seven, I have Spencer and Ian. Another tally on the gross age gap relationship counter, please. So this one I hate. Oh. Ian is such a villain. He is one of the the men on this show are just the pits. They are truly, truly the pits. This happens prior to Alison's disappearance, and Ian is dating Melissa and then kisses Spencer, who's obviously her younger sister. They have this weird kind of flirty relationship. They end up kissing, and obviously Alison sees, and that all kind of goes like that. I think again, this one's just so icky. The fact that it was his girlfriend's younger sister awful the fact that it was someone who was 15 anyway because i don't know how old exactly ian's meant to be i think he's definitely yeah like mid or even late 20s so the fact that he was pursuing someone that was 15 anyway is disgusting but then the fact that you add on that it was his girlfriend's younger sister because his girlfriend you know he was going into their home as a trusted adult he was going in there as the older sister's boyfriend you know they obviously let him into the house and he uses that and the fact that he's also the hockey coach i'm pretty sure as an abuse of power and is able to take advantage of spencer through that and i think what makes this even worse on top of that as well is that when it does come out that this happened no one looks out for spencer nobody cares her family blame it on her it's a whole thing they make it seem like she was jealous and this and that when she was the victim in that situation and then at number 76 i have allison and ian because we just we want to keep the ian hate train going okay add another one to the counter so it was a real toss-up for me for me i think spencer and ian and allison and ian those those are tied they are just both so awful i think the only reason that I thought that Spencer and Ian was just slightly worse was because of the dynamic being his girlfriend's younger sister and and the fact that he was able to kind of abuse that that relationship in that way but I think Alison and Ian is equally as bad the fact that again she was just 15 and the fact that he they went to a hotel together and I don't think they actually end up sleeping together but I think it kind of insinuates that that was going to happen, like with the camera on the bed. And obviously Ian is in the NAT club and he's filming these videos and all this stuff. And for whatever reason, he obviously made Alison feel like he really liked her. But then secretly he's filming these videos and he's doing all this dodgy shit. And he's also trying to pursue things with her best friend, who again is 15 and it's just just so icky so icky at number 75 i have allison and cyrus um partly because they weren't even really a thing so they had to be further down the list but also again cyrus looks bare old so i am not buying this man is the same age as these girls i think he's got to be at least early 20s if not older so another one on the counter please and as well he is just he introduces her to his friends and they're obviously holding hands and everything so that kind of insinuates they were together and they end up stealing all of her stuff and he cuts her leg and just a whole a whole mess of stuff happens and even after she's back he still tries to get involved and all this all this kind of stuff um i mean he gets his when he's in the icu but whatever so there's a, there's a little bit of karma working there 
Um, I literally think, as much as I hate the fact that Alison went through all these awful relationships, I do enjoy whenever they get their comeuppance, you know? Like, Alison's the one that pushes Ian off of the bell tower, queen shit. Um, Cyrus ends up getting, you know, killed by A. I'm pretty sure he gets killed, or at least he gets, you know, like, burned or whatever by A. Elliot gets hit by the car, you know. We get we get a few little nice karma moments for Alison, bless her, because I think... I talked about this in my Alison ranking video, but she goes through so much. And I think no one in the show truly reaches out to her. No one in the show truly talks about the trauma that this girl has gone through. By the time that she had disappeared, well, by the time that she was 18, she had been in numerous creepy age gap relationships. Not once in the show, aside from Emily, does she have... And may, even maybe Lorenzo kind of, but we're going to get to him. Not once does she have a true representation of a healthy, caring, loving relationship aside from Emily. And I just think that's a real shame. Following on from that, who do we have at number 74? We have Alison and Holbrook, another one on the counter. Because what was the, even this? What even was this? I can't even speak. Like, so they end up kissing, um... Obviously, the classic, I saw Ali kissing Santa Claus. And it turns out they were kind of a thing. And then the girls think that Holbrook is protecting Alison because they're dating when she was the one that killed Mona. And it's just, it's a whole mess. And I think what gets lost in that whole mess is why is this police officer, who is obviously older, dating a 17-year-old? Why? Why is he doing that? And as well, even more than that, he knows what she's been through. He takes her to the place, you know, where they say that this is where Cyrus kept her. And it is, obviously, it wasn't where he kidnapped her, but it was where he attacked her. And, you know, he knows all of this stuff, still pursues her anyway, and just completely takes advantage of the fact that she's obviously hurting. She's obviously gone through a really traumatic experience She's been gone for two years and he comes back and tries to date her. What? What? Number 73, I have Hannah and Holbrook because they kind of, for me, tied. I would say the only reason that Hannah and Holbrook is higher is because they have some kind of sweet moments where he does seem genuine for me, that's the only thing that kind of separates Alison and Holbrook and Hannah and Holbrook. We just saw more of Hannah and Holbrook. But again, creepy age gap. Why is this detective trying to pursue someone who is so closely linked as well to the cases that he is trying to solve? All very dodgy. And um, yeah, I feel like I kind of talked about Holbrook again. Um, any, like I said, any of these relationships that we talk about that have the five girls mentioned, I talk far more in depth about why I've put them where I put them in their individual videos, if you do want to see that. At 72, I have Aria and Connor, which you might not even remember, but this happens in, I think, season two, maybe? Maybe season two, I can't remember exactly. Maybe it's season three. But um, Connor is one of Mike's friends and Aria is trying to help him with like homework or some school thing. And he kisses her. She says, no, I'm not interested. And then the next day at school, he tells everyone that they had hooked up and there's these rumors going around. And it's really sad. And I think... Again, these things, these really awful things happen to these characters. And then are just forgotten about. Um, and I think it's a shame because I really liked Arya's when she, you know, was experiencing the anxiety and the panic attacks. For me, that was, I really enjoyed seeing that representation. That's something that I have struggled with. So I thought that was a really good um, story to tell. Similarly, you know, with the rumours and everything in this Arya and Connor story, I think they could have really gone somewhere with that and Arya's character and how she is affected by these things. But then after one episode, they get kind of 
like pushed under the rug. Um, but I thought it was important. And I think as well, they did this in Riverdale in the first season where um, Veronica goes out with Chuck and he spreads these rumors about her and she really takes a stand to get back at him and she talks to other girls that have been through the same thing. And I think they had that opportunity with what happened to Arya. Um, and I like that she stands up for herself and she goes in there and she says, you know, this isn't true and everything. Um, but again, it kind of is used as a plot point to push her and Ezra kind of closer together and just involve that rather than it being her kind of moment of um, empowerment. So yeah, Connor was gross and yeah, that's kind of it. But like I said, we also, it's a barely even a storyline. It's just one episode. So that's why, again, not really noteworthy. So further down the list. At number 71, I have Alison and Ezra, which is just, it's the relationship that should never have happened. I don't understand why they added it in. The whole book thing is ridiculous. And I just, yeah, I hate that storyline. Um, and... Obviously, Ezra turns out to be board shorts and they meet in this bar. Alison lies about how old she is. Um, I think... Oh, add another counter for the age thing. I think um, I put this one a bit higher up than, say, Spencer um, and Ian or Alison and Ian, Alison and Holbrook, because, yes, obviously Alison did lie about her age and she does get served at the bar um, I don't think she looks 21. Come on, Ezra, use your bloody eyes, but whatever. Um, so I think that's the only reason is because technically speaking, you know, Ezra doesn't know that she is underage. And when he does find out, he, you know, cuts things off with her um, and is upset that she lied to him. And obviously in the show's eyes, Ezra is supposed to be a good guy. So that's kind of how this relationship is framed, that it's not that bad. But it is that bad and I think it creates not only like that weird storyline but like a weird rift between Alison and Arya that I don't think needed to be there and I feel like it was again for like shock factor but doesn't really add anything because after this storyline the book you know never is brought up again Arya and Ezra get back together anyway Alison and Ezra never really interact and when they do it's like nothing even happened between them so I think it was kind of unnecessary. And again, just another another gross relationship. At number 70, I have Caleb and Mona because they do share a kiss. And yes, okay, it was like planned, it's staged, you know, whatever. But they do share a kiss, so I feel like they count. Um, and I have them this low. I, well, I have them like, I guess not that low considering they're like 15 up from the bottom. But... I thought the dynamic was kind of funny. I think them two as a like weird little frenemies dynamic is really funny. And I actually do really enjoy their scenes together. Um, but obviously as an actual couple, they don't work. At 69, I have Jessica De Laurentiis and Peter Hastings. Um, this is just weird. Like th the whole intertwining of the Hastings De Laurentiis family I feel like at first was fine, you know, at first it was fine with just Jason being um, Peter's. That was, I thought that was actually a good storyline, but then they take it so out of hand later down the line with Mary Drake and just Alex Drake and just everything like that. But initially, obviously the big affair is Peter and Jessica. Um, I stan Veronica Hastings, not all the time, okay? She has some wrongs, but I, I do like her. So Peter's scum for cheating on her multiple times. Like they are together and it's just, it's all very weird. Um, and he's just awful as well. Like he is just awful. Um, I can't lie, I don't even blame Jessica for cheating on Kenneth because Kenneth is also like, ugh. You know what I mean? Like, he's just, ugh. <gasps> I have forgotten Jessica and Kenneth. I've forgotten Jessica and Kenneth. I can't believe this. I can't believe I actually forgot somebody. Okay, 
I'm putting Jessica and Kenneth in line at 69 with Jessica and Peter because I also don't like them. I can't believe I forgot somebody after I literally said, I hope I haven't forgotten anybody. At 68, I have Aria and Sean, um, which isn't really a couple. It's not reciprocated, but he does try to kind of pursue her. He sends her flowers, even though he's dating her best friend. And that's just, that's just bad etiquette, Sean. What are you doing? What are you doing? Um, but they could have been kind of cute in a weird world. And if you read the books, then, you know, Sean's very different in the books, which makes him more likable, I think. Um, but yeah, yeah. They could have been cute in like a weird world, but the fact that he sends her flowers when he's with Hannah is instant red flag. At 67, I have Ashley and Jason, which to be honest with you, I always forget even happened because so weird. Um, I toyed with whether to put this one in the weird age gap relationship, but I ended up not because he is a fully, you know, consenting adult. He is a grown man. I think he's literally supposed to be like 25, maybe even older. Um, I think he's, I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be like 24, 25. So, um, and Ashley's like, I assume she's probably like late 30s, maybe early 40s. Um, so it is a bit of an age gap, but it's not like predatory, I don't think. Um, I just thought it was a bit of a weird pairing. Again, definitely more for shock value than any kind of plot to the story. They weren't sweet. Like, they were just kind of a thing that happened and just felt unnecessary. At 66, I have Emily and Shower Harvey. So this just felt weird to me, okay? This just felt weird to me. Firstly, she's obviously... I know they both went through a traumatic thing, well, they actually didn't because Sarah Harvey was in on it. But in Emily's mind, they both went through this traumatic thing. But Emily had been in there for three weeks, I think. Whereas in her mind, Sarah Harvey, the story that they were telling was that Sarah had been down there for two years, okay? So I just feel like dating isn't really her priority. But Emily kind of pursues her anyway, which is kind of bizarre. And I don't like how Emily is when she's dating Sarah Harvey because she's weirdly like possessive over her, doesn't want her to hang out with her friends. Like, I don't know. It was all just very weird. And there was absolutely zero chemistry there. I'm sorry. Like, that's not me trying to rag on the actors or anything, but there was just no chemistry between those two actors, no chemistry between the two characters. And I just kind of, when I rewatch, just wait for that whole thing to just be over. <laughs> At 65, I have Byron and Meredith. So obviously Byron is Arya's dad and Meredith is who he cheats on Ella with before they move to Iceland. And then he gets back together with her. This is why, okay, this is why I cannot stand Byron, okay? And I feel like the show kind of tries to paint him as like the, not the nicest of the dads because we love, we love Mr. Fields, okay? Love that man. R.I.P. But... Byron's supposed to, like kind of painted as not that bad of a dad or kind of a good dad and he is not he actually is not and he obviously cheats on Ella they've been together for years and years and years have two kids together he cheats on her not to mention the fact that Meredith is his well she was his student but then you know she's an assistant teacher and whatever so it's just all very creepy do you know what? I'm putting Meredith and Byron as a counter on the age gap thing because even though she would have been 18, I think she probably would have been maybe early 20s when they did like hook up originally. Still a complete abuse of power considering the fact that he was a professor at her uni. And then when they started dating again, she was an assistant teacher and he was obviously again still higher up in the rankings than her. So just weird. And then, yeah, so not only does he have this affair, he asks Arya to lie about it. That scene where he asks her to lie and he's like, I don't want to hurt your mother. Like, you don't want to break up like our family is basically what he's saying and completely manipulates her. I hate that scene. Like, well, I think it's a good scene, but it just shows how awful Byron is. And he gets this weird redemption arc where obviously, you know, Ella 
takes him back and they get remarried. And I'm like, no, Ella, come on now. More self-respect. So, yeah. And then he gets back together with Meredith. I just feel as though if he was truly remorseful and sorry and actually wanted to be with Ella, even though Ella had left and they'd separated, he wouldn't go back to Meredith. Do you know what I mean? He would move on and he would find someone new. But no, he goes back to her. And then she drugs Arya and locks her in the basement and has like some weird psychotic break. And it's just very bizarre. At 64, I have Ella and Zach. I think this one is pretty obvious. And I think it was a real shame because Ella actually deserved better. You know, Ella deserved better. She was cheated on by her husband, who was the love of her life. And then when she finds this new guy who's really sweet and he bakes and they're going to go and live wherever they're going to live together. I can't remember it now. And, you know, and then he turns out to be an absolute scumbag as well. I would have much preferred if they had just kept him and Ella together and she had been able to, you know, restart her life rather than this weird storyline where she thinks that she's, you know, going to have a fresh start and meets this really nice guy. He turns out to be a scumbag and then she just goes back to the guy that cheated on her. I don't like that, you know? Obviously, Zach approaches Hannah and is weird with her and is inappropriate with her and that ends Ella and Zach's relationship. And yeah, more creepy, more creepy men. I didn't put Hannah and Zach on this list, um, even though I guess judging by my criteria they should be on the list but just know that if I had included them they would have been again at the very bottom you know what no I'm not gonna say it's like an age gap relationship because she was not interested in him in the slightest so but again just rosewood men being creeps you know at 63 I actually have Toby and Allison because I thought they could have been kind of cute um in like some weird world you know she has they have that flashback moment where she kind of says like do you want to kiss me or something like that or you know they almost kiss and I think he in a world where Spoby doesn't exist he actually could have been a good partner for her because he was just genuinely kind and I think they would have had a really kind of nice dynamic um, I know that obviously she is really cruel to him in the flashbacks and things, but I think for a split second we saw maybe a moment of her actually feeling bad for him. Um, so yeah, they're far down because obviously they're not a real couple or anything. They're never really um, insinuated to be such, but I think they kind of weirdly had potential if she hadn't been so mean to him. At 62, I have Ezra and Maggie because what on earth was that? What on earth was that? She uses their family for money and then, you know, Ezra comes back into, um, what's his little boy's name? Malcolm. She brings Ezra into Malcolm's life and he's becoming a dad and then it turns out that Malcolm's not even his and she just takes him and leaves. How messed up is that? How genuinely messed up is that? Because obviously he's not the father, so he has no rights, but he's now attached to this to this boy. And how confusing was that as well for Malcolm to be like, this guy is, you know, related, like this guy's my dad um, and I've created this bond with him and now he's just disappeared out of my life. She was messed up. Maggie was messed up. But, you know... They were an actual couple, which puts them, they've got more stake than some of the other people further down this list. And they were both consenting adults when they were, you know, they were both consenting when they were together and they're both adults. <laughs> like that's genuinely the criteria is being the same age will just automatically put you higher on this list because of how many weird relationships there are on this list. At 61, I have Mary, Drake, and Ted, because this just ruined me, truly. This is just a personal vendetta, because in reality, you know, they're both consenting adults and whatever, they should probably be higher on this list, but I don't care, I'm putting them low on this list, because I loved Ashley and Ted, okay? I loved Ashley and Ted, and I just felt like it was the writer's names, they wanted Shock Valley, they wanted someone that we knew to be the dad, and they chose Ted, and they dragged that man's name through the mud, because... 
Ted was so nice. He was so sweet. And I wanted him and Ashley to be endgame. And the fact that he turned out to be Cece's dad, I was just like, you, you, you're you, being ridiculous. You are being ridiculous. Why did you even do this? And that's why they're far down this list. Because it was a personal attack on me, I feel. At number 60, I have Ashley and Byron, which again, not a real relationship, but there was a spark, okay, in the blackout episode when he goes over... Um, or like the power, it's not a blackout, but, well, it is a blackout, but it's like caused by a storm or whatever, like the, the, um, the SAT episode. Um, and he goes over there and they start talking and things. And obviously they're both have been through a separation and he is going to invite her to his work do and stuff. And there's kind of a little flirty exchange. And then they decide, you know, that's probably not the best thing to do, but honestly, there's a little bit, there's a little bit of chemistry there. I'm not gonna lie. There's a little bit of chemistry there. Ashley deserves better because, as we've discussed, Byron's a pig. But, you know, I was kind of, I was a little bit here for it. I'm not gonna lie. I was a little bit here for it, just for a second. Just for a, just for a brief second. I was like, this is kind of interesting. At 59, I have Tom, Marin, and Isabel because these two just bloody deserve each other. Actually, you know what? No, they don't. Actually, do they? Yeah, they do. Mm. I think they do, but I definitely think that Tom is worse than Isabel because obviously Isabel should not have gotten involved with a married man um, because obviously Tom ends up leaving Ashley for Isabel. So a little bit of karma going on there, but also he's just the bloody worst and goes back and sleeps with Ashley, even though he's supposed to be getting married to Isabel and, you know, just... Just awfulness after awfulness. And Isabel raised Kate, who was a little devil. So there's got to be something wrong with Isabel. So, yeah, they're higher up on the list because, to be honest, they kind of just deserve each other, which makes them work as a couple. <laughs> At 58, I have Simone and Ezra because even though they weren't a proper couple, um, they had like a little flirt exchange and Simone obviously, you know, said that she was interested in him. And they seem to have things in common and... Um, actually, you know, we're the right age for each other. So yeah, they kind of, they kind of worked. Also, um, Simone was Arya's babysitter. It's like from season one. It's real. It's, it's literally just for an episode, but I, I, I gave him a place on the list. You know, I was very thorough with, with my choosings here. At 57, I have Ashley and Tom. The only reason that I kind of have them a bit higher than, say, Tom and Isabel is just because they were married and they had Hannah together and they were happy for a good amount of time, I guess. And when he does come back, she, you know, she obviously still loved him and he just kind of takes advantage of that. And I don't. Yeah, Tom's just the worst. He's easily one of the worst parents on this show and Ashley deserves better than him. So, yeah. We're getting, I feel like, I feel like originally in like the first 15, we were in truly disgusting couples, couples that I truly hated. And now from like, what are we at? Like 60 to probably 40. We're now getting into more of the meh couples, couples that weren't that developed, couples that I just don't personally like or found that interesting. Just to kind of, just to kind of give you a gauge of the kind of scale that we're, that we're working with here. At 56, I have Paige and Sean. I have them here because obviously Paige is gay and and she realizes that and her and Sean will go out again. But for the time that they were, they were really cute. I think it would have been cute to see that friendship continue even after she obviously realized that she doesn't want to date him um, for them to still be friends because I thought it was cute. They had similar interests so they seemed to get on really well. Um, and... Sean, like I said, you know, he seems like a pretty decent guy and he wasn't stepping on anybody's toes. He wasn't dating anybody while he was talking to Paige. So yeah. At 55, I have Emily and Toby and I know they weren't a proper couple, but he obviously really liked her and Toby's so sweet and I love their little friendship. And in another world where Emily is by, um, I think they could have been, they could have been cute. At 54, I have Hannah and Lucas. Obviously this was incredibly one-sided um, he just absolutely adored Hannah. I think I would have liked to see maybe, I, I think I'm happy with them having not actually dated in the show. Um, but I don't know. I think it could have been kind of interesting. It would have been nice to see her kind of 
go out with someone who wasn't probably who she would normally go for, but also that would have been quite cliche. So I'm happy with them just being friends and just being like, no, you can just have, you know, just be friends rather than it always turning into a kind of couple situation. But yeah, then Lucas is really weird and he obviously is the one that destroys Alison's memorial and he ends up having been friends with um, with Charlotte and he also, I think, pulls the funding for Hannah's like fashion brand or something. It's all very strange. So I did like Lucas, but then they kind of ruined his character, I think, towards the end after the time jump. At 53, I have Hannah and Mike, okay? And I thought Hannah and Mike were so cute. They're not, they don't even interact. I don't think they have one scene together, really. But we find out through Alison's diary that Hannah had kissed Mike and she obviously ridicules her for it. Aria mentions that Mike always had a crush on Hannah and this is a nod to the books. Um, so I'm not going to do like spoilers for the books or anything, but I think it was a cute little nod to the books. And I think it actually would have been kind of cute to see them together once they were a bit older, like maybe post time jump or something. Because, um, yeah, I just thought it was really sweet that Mike genuinely liked Hannah and had this crush on her. And I think it was so sad that Alison made her feel like no one could ever have a crush on her. Um, and yeah, I just thought that was kind of sweet. At 52, I have Jackie and Ezra because I think, you know, they just didn't really have any chemistry for me personally. That's not even me being like, oh, even better with Aria, but like, I just don't think they really had that much chemistry, but obviously they were engaged, um, and she is his age. So, you know, that wins them brownie points in this, in this race. Um, so Yeah. I didn't really see, for me, there wasn't really that much chemistry there. Um, and, but I think it's so, it's always so funny when you look back at these storylines and how they paint these people as villains. Like, even though, Bar even though Byron was a villain, don't get me wrong, they paint him as the villain for thinking that Ezra and Arya should be together. They also paint Jackie as the villain because she blatantly is like, you two should not be together. When in reality, these people are just spin facts. Like, <laughs> they just are. Um, so I feel like Jackie was, she was getting the hate, but, you know, she was, she was right. At 51, I have Garrett and Jenna. Add another one to the counter. Um, I have them a bit higher up because they're obviously both kind of villains. So they do pair well together, age gap aside. Um, but I don't know. I just always found their relationship to be really weird. I found it to be very random and the fact that they were together um the when Alison disappears means that she was 15 and he again you know police officer would have been older he was also part of the NAT club and very weird and dodgy um so yeah their relationship just never really made any sense to me I guess at 50 I have Melissa and Garrett um, they're one higher up because obviously they were actually a similar age. So again, they get points for that. But again, their relationship felt very random to me. Um, like I said, I don't like Garrett, but their pairing just felt random. I don't really understand why it was a thing. Didn't really add anything, um, to the plot. At 49, I have Ian and Melissa because they were definitely a bigger couple presence in the show. They obviously get married and they're going to have a baby. Um, so they had they have more of a stake. I felt like I couldn't put them a lot lower down because of that. Um, but also they both had their little kind of evil ways. But I do think obviously Ian was far worse. And even though I'm not Melissa's biggest fan, she still definitely deserved better than Ian. He didn't even care when he heard that his wife who was carrying their baby was in a car crash he was more fussed about getting these nat videos back at 48 i have aria and andrew um just because there was no chemistry here bless his heart he he was a trier um and i feel like i just didn't like i love aria okay i'm an aria stan and she's my favorite character 
But I really didn't like how Arya treated Andrew. He was always kind of used as a bit of a convenience thing. She only spoke to him when she needed something from him and then just fully accuses him of putting them in the dollhouse. So <laughs> very bizarre. I feel like poor Andrew didn't, he didn't deserve that. He was just a nice guy that just really liked her and... Yeah, but yeah, there was no chemistry there. At 47, I have Arya and Clark. I'm also adding them to the counter because they kind of paint him as though he's a student, but actually he's a cop, so he's got to be older than her. Um, and he's like undercover and whatever. And it was just kind of weird because he befriended her and everything, but then, and like, but it was all just to kind of find out stuff about her and it was weird. It was weird. I think he was there to like protect her or something. I can't really remember. But yeah, it was all just weird. It was all just like based on lies. Um, but the only thing they kind of had going for them was that I did think it was cute that he encouraged her to pursue her photography and to enter this art competition. And they kind of had that little bond that she doesn't really have with anyone else in the show where she can kind of talk about her hobbies and interests. She never gets the chance to really... Um, discuss that with anyone else. So that was kind of nice. At 46, I have Hannah and Ren. Um, add another one to the counter. I have no idea how big this counter is going to get by the end of this video. Um, it's already too big. But yeah, Hannah and Ren, I have them kind of this high up on the list because I did think they had some sweet moments. Um, but I kind of, yeah, wish that it had just been that. Like he had just helped her out and had been kind of someone for her to confide in about the whole Mona thing. But I think her then kissing him just kind of ruined that. And obviously he turns out to be quite evil um, come the end of the series. So yeah, while they shared some kind of nicer moments that have put them higher up on this list, um, they definitely couldn't go any higher than this. At 45, I have Arya and Riley. Um, Riley was like fine, I guess. Um, he was a bit more adventurous and I think he was just, yeah, a rebound from Ezra when Arya was struggling with the fact that he'd written this book and, and everything. And she goes on this kind of, I don't know, she's like drinking and obviously ends up with this guy and he just, he was kind of sweet. Um, but yeah, he was only in it for an episode. Um, and we didn't see him again after that. I feel like that would have been kind of cool to see him maybe in the time jump or something like that. Um, but yeah, there wasn't really much to go on. So they're kind of just in the middle. At 44, I have Spencer and Colin. So Colin is the guy that Spencer um, meets. He is Melissa and Ren's roommate when she goes and stays in their flat in London. I'm adding him to the counter because... Obviously, for him to live with Ren and Melissa, he's probably around their age. He looked, he definitely looked older. So, gross. But that side, I think, they were quite sweet. He took a genuine interest in her and the things that she liked. And I think Spencer's definitely carrying this one for me because she was just such a cutie when she was in London. Like, the way that she would get excited about Shakespeare and, and all these other things. Um, and I think... Had he been, yeah, younger or she had been older, they would have been kind of a cute little match because they, yeah, were interested in the same things. And, um, well, yeah, that's kind of it. Like I said, these, these, these middle ones, these like bulk kind of 60s to 40s or whatever it's going to be, are really just kind of like I had to put them somewhere and they're not totally awful, but I also don't really care about them. <laughs> At 43, I have Mary Drake and Peter, um, just because they're both kind of evil, you know, they kind of, they kind of deserve each other. Um, but I don't think it's right that obviously she, like, he thought that she was Jessica, but then, I don't know, that was a whole very weird thing. But Peter's just scum anyway. Like, <laughs> Peter's just the worst anyway, and she was also kind of the worst. Um, but also... She was, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like just because they were both kind of evil, they and they were better suited for each other than Jessica and Peter were. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess at least he took care of her kid, but then they gave up the other one. Although they didn't know there was another one. 
Breathe of the Lies is so bloody confusing. They're at 43. I'm just going to leave them there because my brain, my brain can't even comprehend talking about them for longer. At 42, so we're like halfway now. We're getting, we're getting there. We are getting there, people. We have Arya and Noel. Um, I thought Arya and Noel were really cute um, until obviously he you know, tried to blackmail Ezra. Um, but also, again, they make him seem like the villain when he kind of just voices the fact that, hey, this guy's a teacher. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, but I thought they were really cute, especially when, you know, he plays the guitar and she sings. And like I said, no spoilers for the books, but it is a cute kind of nod to the books as well, um, which I did like. And I think that kind of makes me a little bit more biased towards them. Um, and I think had Noel not been made fully evil and been involved in the dollhouse, which was just weird because like, what, why? But whatever. Um, and then I think they could have been really cute. Um, and I would have liked, obviously he was her age, so that was all good. And I think as a high school romance kind of goes, I thought they were really like a cute little match for that. At 41, I have Spencer and Johnny. Um, I'm adding this to the weird age counter because he looked a lot older. And he, I think they talk about the fact that he decided not to go to uni. So he's obviously is like kind of confirmed to be a bit older. And... The only thing was I kind of liked that they were a little bit opposite because it kind of brought a little fun side out in Spencer. But I also didn't like that he knew how she was and still got her to go and paint this mural knowing that it was graffiti and that she would get in trouble if they were found out. And yeah, he was just a bit older. Um, so it was all a bit weird, but I guess they did kind of share a couple of nice moments. So yeah. I feel like, retrospectively, I think I would probably swap these two, actually. I don't know, it's hard, because in my heart of hearts, I think I prefer Arya and Noel to Spencer and Johnny, just because they're more iconic characters, whereas Johnny, like, was just kind of a nobody. But also, Johnny wasn't pure evil, like how Noel turned out to be in the end, so... Yeah, they're kind of a bit of a toss-up, I guess. But at number 40, I have Lucas and Danielle, which, again, is probably a really random one. I don't know if people remember this. But in season two, I think it is, um, after Hannah and Caleb had split up, they kind of pretend to fake date so that Danielle will go out with Lucas and not think that, you know, him and Hannah are an item. And I thought they were kind of cute. You know, they had cute chemistry and she seemed to quite like him and then she just kind of disappears and we don't hear from her again. I think it would have been kind of cute if in the time jump when we saw Lucas they were still together or had kind of found their way back to each other. I think that would have been a nicer ending for him than just using him as a plot point and then kind of getting rid of him. At 39 I have Ara and Liam because for me the chemistry was just not there. I did not care about these two. I found them so incredibly dull. I'm sorry, because I love Arya. But he was a nice enough guy, I guess. But it just was weird and just, yeah, I don't know. He was kind of boring. And then he turns kind of like mean towards the end, like and kind of threatens Ezra. Um, and I don't know, it was all just a bit weird. And then he just kind of leaves. Um, he was definitely, I think, <laughs> I get where they were coming from with him because he was definitely a placeholder for Ezra. We all knew they were going to end up together. Um, and he was kind of like an obstacle in the way, but I think you can do that and still have interesting characters and contenders. Whereas Liam was never someone I was kind of going to root for because I just found him kind of boring and they just lacked that chemistry, even though I feel like they had potential because the whole office, secret office romance thing um, had potential, but yeah, I don't know, just the way that he was written and I don't know, I feel like they just, they could have done better with him, I think. At 38, I have Veronica and Peter because obviously they were married, They con she continues to stick by his side, she obviously took in Spencer when she didn't have to and raised her as her own. So really, they're only this high on the list because I love Veronica Hastings. Um, and yeah, I just think they're obviously a better pairing than him and Mary Drake and him and Jessica De Laurentiis. At 37, I have Jenna and Shauna because even though it was very short-lived, they seemed 
actually genuinely kind of sweet and Shauna seemed to really care for Jenna um and obviously Jenna kind of manipulated it and and whatever but um yeah I don't know they seemed like kind of weirdly sweet and then Shauna just gets killed off so we kind of don't see where it would have gone or um anything like that but the scenes that we did get of them I thought I thought they had potential at 36 I have Emily and Talia because I thought they had really good chemistry but I'm adding them to the counter because she was married and she was older but I think they had I mean Emily was 18 at this point um but for me I still think it's just weird um um but aside that stuff aside I think they did have really good chemistry I did enjoy their scenes together and I would have really liked if maybe Talia had come into it after the time jump um she hadn't worked there you know when Emily was younger but was just purely an interest a love interest um in the time jump because I think that could have really worked and I actually would have been quite happy for them to have been endgame had the circumstances just been different because it kind of feels like Talia kind of uses Emmy a little bit as a way to explore her sexuality um and obviously you know she is married and she is older and yeah that makes it all very weird and that's why they're further down the list but I think just purely based on the chemistry between the two actors the way that they that she was written and the scenes that they have together were actually quite sweet and I think yeah definitely would have had more potential had it been in the time jump at 35, I have Spencer and Dean. So Dean was Spencer's sponsor for kind of her, you know, um, sobriety. And um, yeah, I thought they were really cute. I can't lie. I thought that the guy that played Dean was really cute. And I liked the chemistry between them. Um, I'm adding him to the counter, though. I'm adding him to the counter. But I think him kind of just falling in love with her was kind of sweet um and I think obviously she says no because she's with Toby and everything which was definitely the right call I wouldn't have liked them to get together then but again I think post time jump rather than her and Caleb her and Dean um I think could have been a really good um yeah like I said good pairing kind of like Talia where I think they had good chemistry. I enjoyed their scenes together, um, but it just wasn't the right time for them. But I think definitely potential when the girls were older and more in line with their ages. At 34, I have Charlotte and Archer because even though I don't like that couple, I don't ship it, they were both evil and kind of deserved each other. Um, so I think that is why they are kind of weirdly well matched. I just really didn't like Archer's character at all. So it didn't feel like a kind of power villain couple um, to me, but they kind of, you know, did sort of deserve each other. And the scenes that we did see when they, you know, before like everything kind of went a bit evil, um, they seemed to kind of, yeah, get on and be and be happy. Um, but yeah, it just all got taken down a very weird road. And the fact that he dated Alison even while like Charlotte was still alive and yeah, very very weird. At 33, I have Spencer and Ren because they, I do, I, Ren is so much better in the books. I can't even tell you, Ren is so much better in the books. Um, but he is, I don't know. I, I struggle with Ren. I think because I do enjoy his character, um, I'm adding them to the counter, but I do enjoy his character. And I think him and Spencer had really good chemistry. But again, I think that just comes from the actors and the actors are obviously far closer in age um, and everyone's, you know, an adult and everything. And I think sometimes it's easy to forget that in this show they are playing the ages that they're playing because they just don't, it just doesn't, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't match up. But um, yeah, I think the actors had good chemistry and I think Spencer and Ren did have good chemistry and their scenes together were really good. But obviously the fact that she was younger and again it was another situation where he was dating the older sister weird power dynamic there um and i but i think had they not made him evil they could have had potential after the time jump after spencer was older um if they had kind of find, found their way back to each other um and he wasn't evil <laughs> then i think maybe that could have 
could have worked. Um, I know a lot of people like the Ren is a theory. I'm going to do a video on it because I've never really done a deep dive into it. To me, it never really made sense um, why people thought that. So I'm interested to see people's evidence and why they felt like that. Um, so I'm probably going to do a little video on that, kind of going through theories and stuff. But yeah, I think had he stayed kind of the sweet character that he was in the early days, but they had just, you know, decided it wasn't the right time for them um, and gone together later, I think that definitely could have had potential. At 32, I have Paige and Shauna because I think they were actually kind of a cute couple. Um, they seemed to get on really well and... Um, they were the right age for each other. And um, yeah, they kind of made it seem like it was a weird pairing or it shouldn't have happened. And it was kind of like evil, like suspicious pairing when it kind of wasn't, they just dated. Um, and I don't really like, uh, I don't really like Emily and Paige. So Paige and Shauna for me, fair. Like that's a fair pairing. Also, I feel like Paige doesn't even react to Shauna's death that I can remember even though they dated, which is weird. I only just thought about that just now. At 31, I have Ezra and Nicole because yeah, same age. So they get points for that. And they seem to actually really get on. Like they seem to connect really well. We don't obviously get to see their relationship, but he seemed obviously very happy with her. Um, and I think their reunion and then being together would have been a really good plot had he stayed with her and Arya had already moved on, I think that story would have still been really emotional and a really good story to tell without Ezra and Arya being together for it in, I don't know, I'm definitely going to do a video on how I personally would have written um, the ending or how I would have had things go maybe post time jump. Um, because for me, I feel like the time jump where the time jump happens, that to me was a pretty good ending. I would have been happy if the show had ended there. Um, I kind of maybe in my mind, the time jump isn't canon, but I think, I don't know whether to do a video based on just how I would have written it completely or um, like things I would have changed and stuff, or maybe just from the time jump onwards, like how I would have done it with the ending that we got, like at the end of the time jump but then how I would have done the time jump. I don't really know. Um, but a little sneak peek into that is I definitely would have kept Ari and Ezra apart. And I think Nicole was a good kind of substitute for him. And I think that storyline of her being taken and him not knowing if she was alive and that spiral and the struggling author thing, I think would have been a good storyline for him that Arya could have gone and helped with but that didn't result in them getting back together and then I think that him finding her and seeing her would have been a really emotional story in their relationship whereas it's just used as a kind of obstacle in Arya and Ezra's. At number 30 guys we're breaking into the top 30 I've been saying it for so long okay top 30 here we go so um at number 30 I have Spencer and Andrew because I know they weren't a couple, but he obviously had like a little bit of a crush on her. And I think that would have been kind of sweet little pairing. And um, they were obviously interested in the same things. I think they were very compatible um, as a couple, actually. So I could have, I, I kind of like to see where that would have gone. Um, I think it definitely had potential. At 29, I have Melissa and Ren, because even though obviously they're not um, a good match because he ends up leaving um, her for her sister but they kind of just kept finding their way back to each other and obviously he did turn out to be a little bit evil and Melissa's got a little bit of evil going on with her as well so um, they kind of they kind of match like that and obviously they were the right age for each other and um, yeah I don't know the fact that they then moved to London together and were together for a little bit during that um, yeah, I feel like for me, again, had that been their kind of end game that they had just lived in London together and gotten married or whatever, um, I think I would have been fine with that ending. Um, but obviously, like I've mentioned a few times, Ren turns out to be rather evil. So at 28, I have Mona and Noel. 
Um, and this is kind of, yeah, just purely from when they actually dated rather than their potential as a long-term couple. But I thought they were kind of fun. Obviously, she deserved a bit, like, he didn't treat her properly. But I think they were kind, they, they had the potential to be like a villain, like power couple, kind of. Um, and I thought that because obviously she was A at the time, her like sneaking around and him being a little bit more like of the smarmy, kind of like cocky high school, I thought that could have been a kind of cool pairing um, if they had stuck with it. But yeah, it's very like short lived. Um, but I think they could have, I feel like they could have gone somewhere with it. I feel like, you know, I feel like it could have worked in a different, in a different world. At 27, I have Emily and Sabrina. So Sabrina is, um, she works in the cafe, um, obviously Ezra's like cafe that he runs, his bookstore. Um, she's not, she doesn't really interact with Emily that much um, in like when she's first introduced prior to the time jump. And then after the time jump, they kind of connect and almost get together, but it kind of fizzles out. Um, so I don't know, they kind of had potential. They weren't, they didn't have that much chemistry, but also she just seemed like a genuinely nice person. And that gets you quite far um, on this list because we have a lot of people on this list that are not nice people. So yeah, they were, they were fine, I feel like. At 26, I have Arya and Wes. So Wes is Ezra's younger brother. And I actually thought they were really cute, okay? so me like when he came to town and obviously they were closer in age because he was Ezra's younger brother um and I thought they actually had a pretty cute connection I think they talked about like poetry or they had read the same books or something and they had I think they shared a kiss yeah I'm pretty sure they did um and he was really kind to her and I thought that had potential Okay, I thought it had potential. At 25, I have Ella and Byron, because even though I don't like Byron, um, they do have some sweet scenes together. I thought when they were kind of sneaking around in season two, kind of deciding whether to get back together or not, I did think that those scenes were pretty good. And um, at least Ella got a happy ending. It's not who I would have put her with. But I do like that she kind of ended up happy and Arya officiating was really cute. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of it. At number 24, I have Mona and the French guy because I don't think he actually gets a name. I don't, I can't remember, but he um, pretends to be a police officer at the end of season seven and pretends to arrest Alex, Drake, and Mary Drake so that Mona can keep them in her little dollhouse um, downstairs in her, I can't remember if it's a doll shop. I think it is a doll shop or it's like a little patisserie or something. And they're still together. And he accepts that, you know, that side of her. And you know what? I'm glad, I'm glad that she ended up with someone. Obviously we don't talk about the perfectionist because that kind of changes things, but just, just talking about Pretty Little Lies specifically. Um, it wasn't my favorite ending for Mona. It's not what I would have chosen for her, but he seemed to kind of match her energy. So cool. But they just came out of nowhere. Like who even was this guy? But whatever, whatever. At 23, I have a Hannah and Jordan, even though I didn't care for them, but he was a decent guy. He was a nice guy. They were the right age for each other. And I think, you know, there was always going to be a kind of stop along the way in the Halob train. Um, so I think, he was fine um he I don't know he was fine he just wasn't the right match for Hannah um because he just didn't seem to really truly get her and she didn't really feel like herself when she was in that relationship but they weren't engaged so I felt like I couldn't really put them lower down on the list because they were pretty serious um and yeah I don't think he was a bad guy but I wasn't that invested in his character and I don't think he was a good contender to kind of make us think, oh, maybe she's not going back to Caleb. I think we're going to talk about Travis because I love Travis. But I think Travis would have been, he would have been chef's kiss if after that time jump, it was Travis, but whatever. At 22, I have Alex and Ren because I feel like this was truly evil couple. Like this was evil couple. They deserved each other on every level. 
Um, and in a weird, twisted way, you know, they were kind of perfect for each other, I guess. Um, and she ends up killing him as well, um, which is kind of just some kind of even more twisted version of like Romeo and Juliet or something. At 21, I have Alison and Lorenzo. I wasn't that invested in them, but it was the first time we'd seen Alison have a relationship where this guy truly did seem to care about her. Um, and so that was kind of nice to see. Um, I think it's on the counter. It's definitely on the counter. I'm not putting Alex, am I putting Alex? I'm not putting Alex and Ren on the counter because they were older when they got together. But yeah, definitely um, Alison and Lorenzo makes it onto the counter because he was a cop and she was still only like 17 or 18 um, when they did go out. But he did seem to genuinely care about her. And I thought it was sweet that he, even when the town, you know, had all these rumors about her and her reputation was in the trenches, that he still believed in her and was like, oh, would you, do, would you want to coach like the girls football team or, you know, kind of believed that she was a good person. Um, so, yeah, it, like they were fine. They were fine. At 20, I have Arya and Holden because I thought they were actually kind of cute. I liked the idea of a friends to lovers kind of thing with them. And Holden seemed like a genuinely good guy. And I thought they had good chemistry, like when they both of their things end up being cancelled. So they actually just do genuinely hang out. I thought that was cute. And they play air hockey and things um, and the way that she genuinely cared about him. And his, uh, I think it was like a heart condition and his fighting and everything. Um, I really liked. And then especially when he came back post time jump, I thought that was the perfect opportunity for them to be together. And I would have really liked that. At 19, I have Hannah and Sean because they're just very nostalgic for me. You know, season one. And I thought they were really cute. Obviously, Hannah does not respect Sean as much as she should. She doesn't respect his beliefs and his decisions and tries to force her own views onto him. But she also is very young and naive as well. And she does try to see his way and she goes to the meetings and everything like that, um, which I thought was sweet. And ultimately their relationship is ruined by A, but I think for the time that they were kind of happy, they were pretty cute. At 18, I have Spencer and Marco because I think they did have chemistry and I thought that he was a good partner for her if it wasn't going to be Toby. Um, I liked that he was more serious and they seemed to have things in common. And I think when he took her to like the kind of youth center he went to when he was a kid, that was a really sweet scene. And obviously it's ruined by the fact that Spencer covered up a murder and he, um, he kind of, you know, cottons on to that. But aside that aside, I do think that they had pretty good chemistry and I thought they were pretty sweet and the fact that he gets her, you know, all of her favorite foods and little moments like that, I did enjoy. At 17, I have Emily and Samara. So Samara comes into it in season two, I believe, or maybe the end of season one. And she is um, someone that Emily finds to try and help Paige with, you know, kind of coming to terms with their sexuality and the idea of coming out. But when Paige doesn't show up, Emily and Samara start talking instead and they really like each other and they start kind of casually dating. And I thought Samara was really genuinely sweet. I thought Claire Holt was really great with her. I thought her and Shane Mitchell had great chemistry. I liked them together. I thought the way that they ended was really silly with the whole giving the number to the friend thing. Um, so obviously A kind of puts a stop to that relationship. I think that she was supposed to come back, but she didn't because Claire Holt went to do the originals, I think, or the Vampire Diaries. Um, so that is a shame. Um, like I said, I think her coming back in the time jump would have been great. I would have been very happy with a Samara and Emily endgame. At number 16, I have Toby and Yvonne because even though I love Spoby, I thought Yvonne was really sweet. I thought the way that Toby talked about her and seemed to just genuinely love her was really sweet. And I was just really happy for him that after the things that he had gone through, bless his heart, that he was having a genuinely nice, wholesome relationship and he was going to marry her. And I thought it was so harsh that the way that they ended their relationship was by killing her off. The scene 
when you know they kind of find out that she has died I think it's just so heartbreaking and I thought they had good chemistry and I actually did like Yvonne's character at 15 this could be a controversial one okay I know that it could be a controversial one but I actually have Spencer and Caleb because for me when I look at them as a couple and I take Hannah out of the equation I think they did match pretty well I think I kind of saw it coming from weird comments and the way that they were interacting in season five and before the time jump um so it didn't surprise me when they had gotten together but I think they were kind of a cute pairing the whole love triangle thing aside um had you know Hannah just kind of briefly dated him and never gotten back with him but he was still kind of a character and then him and Spencer had gone together later on I think it would have been fine but just the fact that Hannah was obviously the love of Caleb's life and the fact that that was never going to change, I think just kind of made the whole thing feel a bit pointless and kind of for shock value. And I really, most of all, I didn't like what it did to Hannah and Spencer's friendship because for me, the girls' friendships is the best thing about the show. So I really didn't like that that kind of took a bit of a nosedive for a second there. And um, because it happened so late in the seasons... I feel like we didn't really get to repair that and uh, also I feel like Caleb wasn't really his super sweet self. I mean he kind of was with Spencer but I don't really like how his character changes towards the end of the show anyway. So yeah and especially obviously because of the audience reaction. Um, I think that showed that they definitely weren't supposed to be together but love triangle aside and that awful scene where it's all three of them there and they're crying and he's talking through the door that aside I do think they were kind of a cute pairing for a second at number 14 I have Arya and Jake so I'm adding them to the counter because he was like a karate instructor um so he seemed a little bit older but he is the karate instructor that Arya goes to um when she wants to kind of learn self-defense and I thought they were really sweet. I really liked the actor that played Jake. Um, but ultimately, I think they just didn't really gel because... Not because I didn't think they had chemistry, because I thought they had really good chemistry. But their interests just weren't the same. And I think ultimately that was kind of, yeah, the end of them. And obviously she goes back to Ezra. But I did think they were really sweet. And, you know, when they went to the little, like, country dance together, I really loved. And... Um, I thought they were really cute and really genuine. Um, but yeah, they just kind of weren't going to work because they were too different. But I still did really like them. At 13, we have Hannah and Travis. And now we're getting into the couples that I genuinely love. Like I genuinely love. And I loved Hannah and Travis. Okay, I loved Travis. I truly did. I thought that he was so sweet. I thought he was so kind. And for me, he's easily the next best to Caleb. And like I said, I think in the time jump, had he been the one Hannah was engaged to rather than Jordan, I think that would have been so good. And it would have given a true feeling of, oh my gosh, I actually like these two together. Do I want Hannah and Caleb to get back together? I don't know, because I like Hannah with this guy or this guy's really sweet. I don't see how this can, you know, and everything. Whereas with Jordan, it was kind of obvious that he was disposable. Um, so I would have loved that. I thought he was just such a sweetheart and he genuinely really cared about her and just seemed so lovely and she just wasn't in the right headspace for that relationship. She was obviously struggling with Alison coming back and then with Caleb. So I think it was a shame that they were so short lived because they definitely had so much more potential. At number 12, I have Spencer and Alex. Okay, I love, 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 loved Spencer and Alex. I feel like Spencer and Alex and um, Travis and Hannah, like those are my two like little loves. They're my little niche ships that I just really, really love. Um, Alex comes into it in season one and he um, works at the kind of like tennis club that Spencer goes to. Their chemistry was off the charts, okay? Their chemistry was off the charts. I was so invested. He was such a sweetheart. He was so kind and lovely. And I thought it was such a shame that A, ruined that relationship and we never saw him again because, let me tell you something, if after that time jump, Spencer had become like, yeah, her own member at some kind of like tennis club or she'd gone and he was like a 
big professional tennis player now, like winning tournaments and stuff, I would have ate that up. I would have ate that up and I would have loved, I would have been happy with them to be endgame. Um, and I think it's such a shame that he didn't end up coming back because they had such good chemistry and I loved them. I truly did. At number 11, I have Ashley and Ted, okay? And you might be thinking that's way too high up to put them, but as I mentioned before, I loved them, okay? I loved them. I loved their little kind of like slow burn. Obviously, Ashley didn't treat him the best because he she ended up getting with Jason, I think it was, during that whole thing, or Tom, I can't remember exactly who it was. Um, but then, you know, Ted proposed and they did the Halloween, like matching Halloween costumes together and... I thought it was such a shame that they just kind of fizzled that whole thing out and got rid of him because it just to me made no sense. Like he could have easily been married to her while she was running the hotel or whatever. And they should, they should have been endgame. They should have. I love them. I thought they were so incredibly cute. At number 10, I have Pam and Wayne. Okay. Because that was the only, aside from Pam's homophobia, we, we, we acknowledge that. Okay. But you know, she moved past that. Okay. She moved past it, but they were the only healthy relationship on that show. I loved them. I thought they were so cute. And when then, then they moved away together and the fact that he ended up passing, I thought was so incredibly sad. Um, and I just, oh, I loved them. I loved them so much. I wish we could have seen more of him, um, but it kind of obviously made sense because he would be stationed and he would be away, but easily best, best parent couple on that show by far. I can't believe we're in the top 10 now. This is so exciting. At number nine, I have Jenna and Noel because I feel like talk about a bloody evil power couple. Okay. This is the evil power couple that I was waiting for. Because if you're going to make Noel evil, make him evil. And I just think that Jenna had such evil potential. It was so good. It was so incredibly good. And when they were dated and they were on the Halloween train together, they ate that up. They looked so good as a couple. Everything was so good. I think them being the final big bad would have been absolutely incredible because Jenna had that motive, okay? She had that motive from the very beginning. If anyone had motive against liars, it was Jenna, okay? It was Jenna. And... I loved it. And if Noel had, you know, it was all because of her and they teamed up together and to get revenge and like, oh, that would have ate. That would have been so good. And as a like evil power couple, I think they are everything. Everything. And number eight, I have Emily and Paige. And I, I know that I said I don't like Paige and I stand by that. I don't like Paige. But I think, you know, she is Emily's biggest love interest. I would say even more than Alison. Um, so she's in it for the longest. She's with Emily for the longest time, at least in terms of screen time. And I do think they did have some quite sweet moments. There are moments where I do like them together, but I just think they made Paige unlikable and starting a relationship with trying to drown the other person isn't really the best way to go. Um, but I think they were, they did have really sweet moments. Um, and I think it was a shame that they kind of ruined Paige's character. I think they kind of vanessa eyes her, um, like Vanessa from Gossip Girl. I think they saw the public reaction to Paige and played into that and into her character, whereas I think she could have had a very nice redemption arc in season seven. I didn't want them to end up together, but I thought she could have kind of had a bit more character development than they, than they gave her. At number seven, I have Mona and Mike, okay? I love, 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 loved Mona and Mike. They were only together for a short amount of time. And in the PLL timeline, I think they were only together for like two days because the whole of like seasons three to five or three to six happened in the span of like three months or something crazy. But I genuinely adored them. I thought they were so cute. I was not expecting that pairing, but I really liked it. And I thought... The way that he loved her was so sweet and especially after he thought that she had died and that she just genuinely liked him and he genuinely liked her despite everything that had happened and she felt happy with him and I just thought it was so nice and even Arya had kind of come to accept it in the way that he talked about her after he thought she had died. Um, I just thought it was so sweet and I think obviously the fact that then um Cody Christian I think is oh Christian yeah Cody Christian I think his name is um the guy that plays Mike 
that he, or Chris, is his name Christian? He went to do something else. I think he went to do like Teen Wolf or something. And now like at the minute, I think he's in All American or American something. I can't remember. But anyway, um, he went off to do a different show and he ended up leaving. I think it was a real shame because I would have loved to see Mike and Mona be Endgame. Um, if he had stayed as a character, that would have been really sweet. And I thought it was a shame that, yeah, they didn't get back together after she came back because obviously he um, had kind of left the show by that point. But I really like them together. At number six, just missing out on the top five, I have Ari and Ezra because I know there's a big, you know, there's big discourse about this and people hate this relationship which I do understand, but in that same breath, I think they are the longest standing relationship on this entire show. They are together for the longest. And I I feel like I have to respect that in my rankings. I can't not. The fact that they are together from the beginning all the way through to the end, they do have scenes that I do really like. Um, and when I was younger and I first watched it, I was a big Ezra shipper, okay? I was literally brainwashed. Um, and so part of that still lives in me in a nostalgic way. Um, I completely agree. I mean, they're on the counter. I completely agree that they should never have been together. It's a gross display of, a, you know, misusing a power dynamic. And especially after it's revealed that he did know who she was, because I did really like that scene and I loved them in the pilot. But then to find out that he knew who she was, was awful. And... I think for me, that should have been the end. When he wrote the book, for me, that would have been the end of them. And it would have just been a kind of learning experience for her. And she would have moved on with her life after that. The fact that they still get back together, even after the book, I just found ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I don't agree with them. I don't think obviously a teacher student relationship should have been romanticized in that way. But it is how it is. That's how the show um, decided to go with it. And that's how it will forever be now in the Pretty Little Lies universe. But I, um, yeah, I do have moments that I do really like of them. Like when Arya's waiting in the rain and he, you know, shows up in the car. When she like runs out to see him in the car park and they kiss and things. I do think they do have sweet moments. Um, but overall, I think, yeah, definitely absolutely ruined by the book and um the fact that they kept going after that it just didn't feel the same and yeah lots of lots of Ezra hate which is completely justified um but I also felt like I couldn't not put them high up because they are just such a prevalent couple in the show but um yeah I think I really wish Arya had been given better. I think Arya definitely deserved better. Maybe I'll do like I did a Jenny Humphrey one and Arya Montgomery deserved a better video because I think her potential is completely squashed by her relationship with Ezra, which I think is a real shame. At number five, I have Emily and Allison. Um, for me, I get the Emerson shipping. I do think they have sweet moments, but I think it was definitely mishandled. I think they had the potential to make that a truly amazing relationship for the show and they didn't and they kept them apart for too long. And when they did come back together, it seemed to just be because of like, you know, the whole pregnancy pushed them back together. Their ending felt so rushed with the proposal and um, the fact that they are actually, you know, the perfectionists did a whole thing to that. But just speaking about Pretty Little Lies specifically, it felt rushed. I do like them together. Um... I don't like kind of their beginnings of how Alison obviously treated Emily prior to disappearing. Um, and I think sometimes Emily's character can become less likable when she is kind of surrounded like with Alison and that whole thing. So yeah, I think they do have some sweet moments. I don't mind that they're end game. I think I just would have definitely written it differently. Um, so yeah. At number four, I have Arya and Jason. Um, I really liked Arya and Jason. I'm adding them to the counter. So I'm not I'm not ignoring that because, yeah, that was bad. Um, but I thought they had incredible chemistry. I genuinely did. I thought the actors had incredible chemistry. The characters had great chemistry. I really liked their scenes together. 
And then the fact that it didn't happen, um, you know, in season two, I thought was really good. And then the fact that they had gotten together post time jump, you know, like, well, in the middle of the time jump, once they were older. And again, the chemistry was so good. And I just loved them together. I was so happy that they were finally together. Um, and for me, that would have been a great end game. Um, and I really, really loved it. So the top three. At number three, I have Emily and Maya. I adored Emily and Maya. I loved Maya's character. I thought it was such a missed opportunity for her to not actually be dead. Of all the bloody people in that show that died and came back, it couldn't have been Maya. It could not have been Maya. But I really loved them together. I thought they were so sweet, especially when, you know, Emily was kind of figuring out who she was and Maya was helping her with that. And when they said that they loved each other and just everything. And even when she came back and I just thought the scene where Emily realizes that she has died is heartbreaking. I cry at that song and I cry at that scene every single time. Um, and I really loved them. I thought they would have been an amazing, amazing end game. And with the whole Maya new and they just felt like there was more to it. And I really would have loved for her to have come back. And I thought their relationship, even though it was only kind of short lived for that first and second season, is easily one of the best and one of the ones that I hold very dear. Okay, so I think I have really debated about the top two. I had one at number one and then I decided to switch it and then I switched them back and then I switched them back again. Um, and I know that people will be very divided on this um but this is how I have put them so at number two I have Hannah and Caleb okay I have Hannah and Caleb and I'll explain to you why I have Hannah and Caleb because for me I think I loved them I adored them they're the way that they get together the start of their relationship I think is the best I think it's better than any other relationship on the show that slow burn, the build that they had, the tension they had, it was everything. Um, the fact that they kind of, you know, broke up and then got back together. I loved them. I have always loved them. Even when they had their kind of, you know, hardships where they were both kind of depressed and struggling. Um, and then they came through that. It was everything. I think they have some of the most amazing relationship scenes of the show and everything. I love their whole story. For me where they kind of lost me and why they are number two on the list is, you know, the whole Spencer and Caleb thing. I don't like how Caleb handled that. I also think that towards the end of the show, Caleb and Hannah's characters aren't as good as they were. I don't like them as much as I do in the original, you know, kind of like five seasons. And I think it's a real shame. I think Hannah becomes more mean. I think she becomes more impulsive and kind of weirdly, you know, spiteful. And the way that she treats Caleb isn't very nice. And I also think that kind of in that same breath, Caleb became not as nice. And I don't know, their whole dynamic felt very different once they'd finally gone back together. And I am still very glad that they're end game. I wouldn't change it, but I definitely do think they kind of lost a little bit of their kind of spark but I do still really love them together and then at number one my personal favorite PLL couple of all time is obviously Spencer and Toby I do love Spoby I really do um I think for me they remained very true to character and I think that is like I said why they're above um Hannah and Caleb even though they didn't I mean they they do end up together but for me, I think that Spencer and Toby deserved the big wedding or Hannah and Caleb. Ari and Ezra did not deserve the big wedding. They did not. I would have loved to have seen Spencer and Toby get married. The fact that he was building the house for her gets me every single time. The way that they kind of start and when, you know, they play Scrabble in the motel and they share the pajamas and then they kiss. Incredible. Absolutely love it. Um, I think... It's a shame that it kind of goes the way that it does when he becomes the cop and she obviously has her things with Colin and Johnny and like Dean as well. Like there's all that kind of stuff is mixed in. But 
And then being on the A team, everything about that, I think they were amazingly written and I absolutely loved them. I was so invested in them, always wanted them to stay together. Um, and I think it's a real shame that we didn't get to see that in, you know, in the later seasons. But the scenes that we do have, I absolutely cherish and they are definitely my favourite PLL couple. That is all 85 pairings, love interests, flirtations, kisses, absolutely everything in the Pretty Little Lies universe, ranked from worst to best. My personal least favourites all the way up to my absolute favourites who I loved. Um, and that's after like seven rewatches of this show. Um, they do kind of, you know, change around sometimes, but I think this is a pretty good representation of who I like and I, and I don't like, but I really want to know what you guys think. Who is your favorite PLL couple of all time? I'd be really interested to know if it's not Hayla Borspo because I feel like those are the most two common ones. Um, but yeah, I would love to know how would you have ranked some of these? Do you agree? Do you not agree? Um, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I will do... I don't know if people will be interested in me doing like a kind of uh, one of my favorite YouTubers is Caitlin McKillop and she will do her own rankings, but then she'll do like a Google Docs or like a survey kind of thing to get um, your rankings. So maybe I could do that if you guys would be interested and then you would be able to vote out of maybe we'd narrow it down to like the top 30 um, couples and, you know, kind of how you would um, you would vote for them. So yeah, let me know. And then I would obviously read them out and we would kind of discuss them in a follow-up video. Um, so maybe that could be kind of fun to do, but yeah, uh, that is it for today's video. Make sure you subscribe and like and comment. I love you all very much. And I will leave my second channel, my podcast that I do with my best friend Miranda, Patreon, all that kind of stuff in the description. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.